When the lights come down and I leave the stage, it's you. Great to see you, Mr. DiLorenzo. Likewise, Mike. It's always indeed a pleasure. I tell you, man, um, it's uh, a lot has happened on my end since the last time we talked, and I'm sure there's a lot going on on your end as well. Uh, the thing I'd like to discuss is uh, your humanitarian efforts with the United Nations right now. Um, what's happening with that, Pete? Yeah, well, actually, you know, last we spoke and during the uh, Global Cooperation Day, which was October 4th of last year, uh, actually, as, as you know, in our last interview, I had uh, been asked to come on board uh, kind of about the end of April. I had met these people uh, in New York City on a performance with Elena Newsman, uh, renowned recording artist. It was an honor to be her guest. And uh, it went very successful. And thanks to you and your interview with, uh, you know, American Arts Radio Web. TV and uh, uh, so many others that came on board, uh, worldwide exposure. Uh, this year, I kind of am picking up uh, where I left off with the United Nations. I was uh, asked to, uh, it was quite tight scrutiny of a, a private conference room with them in Washington, D.C. I spoke with two delegates, and they were very impressed with what Global is about. And just to recap for your listeners and viewers is that Global is worldwide in helping countries all over the world, including the United States, emerging to help people that are desolate, poor, homeless, uh, needy, especially countries that are deprived uh, of medicine, food, water, clothing, school supplies, uh, all of these things. So, you know, it was started by Liz Greenwell, uh, from, she was originally from Ireland, from New Zealand, and, uh, you know, she saw the poverty and the desolation of countries, and this is what moved her so deeply to start the organization, and uh, I was very impressed with what they were about. Totally honored to have come on board, uh, you know, and, and to be asked to be ambassador in chief of goodwill and, uh, you know, towards uh, world peace. So with the delegates from the UN, I had corresponded with them and talked with them and emailed. And then we went into the conference called a good half hour. And, uh, you know, they they already have efforts where they're sending out mesh screens to Africa for the malaria and uh, disease and AIDS out there. and So many dying of starvation and lack of water and food. Uh, so they were, you know, wanted to know more about Global, which I thoroughly covered with them. And uh, they have their own, you know, United Nations Foundation television and radio as well, so we could get worldwide exposure there as well. And uh, we kind of left off that right there at the point of where we went on the air worldwide in October that they were dealing with a lot at the same time. But they were very, very intrigued. And now they are thinking of merging with Global in some efforts of collaboration Wow. Reach out. Yeah, so that's where I'm at. So now I emailed them again, and um, they're going to be setting up another conference call with me. And uh, prayers go to the good Lord up above that this will take place. And they, if they collaborate with us, I mean, that's that's just humongous. And then I will be on the grounds of the actual UN with them uh, doing a television shot and also a PSA that will go worldwide. So basically, what this is is... Uh it's a first step on a, a, a major merger to come together in the name of trying to find world peace and help yep. the, 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 the needy around the world, correct? Yes, exactly. That, you hit it right on the head, Mike. That, uh, and that would be a humongous milestone to have the United Nations uh, you know, come on board and merge with Global in the efforts of world peace because, I mean, you know, uh, in the conference call, it was amazing. I'd like to share this with you and your listeners and viewers is that I might have told you this when we talked on the phone, but um, I had kind of, you know, you wanted to be delicate. I don't get into politics, but I, you know, never am ashamed of the gospel of Christ with lies within, within me. And uh, I, I posed to them a question. I said, gentlemen, I said, do you know, when I was a kid, I went to the UN, and I remember seeing Adlai Stevenson up on the podium, and they had headphones you would put on, and different languages and interpreters, and it was very impressive, and I, said, I, I can clearly recall the beautiful marble wall with a, a scripture engraved on there, from the book of Isaiah, and it is recorded again by the Apostle Paul in the book of Philippians, that they shall beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks, and neither shall they learn war anymore. I says, and yet, they neglect to read the next verse which follows, and it says, when they say, peace, peace, then shall come sudden destruction. 
And I asked these two delegates, we're kind of shaking at the knees, like, oh, am I going too far? I said, gentlemen, do you know why that's not possible? And it was like dead air, Mike. Dead air. And then a second or two later, he says, no, why is that, Mr. DiLorenzo? And I says, well, I says, common denominator, fear. F-E-A-R. I says, and it's all about money, power, and greed. I says, because... If this nation had rice, and that nation has oil, and this nation has grain, I says, and we all played nice like kids on a, on a school ground during recess, and everybody cleaned up after their own messes and played nice and bartered and shared, we wouldn't need missiles, we wouldn't need bombs, there wouldn't be implements of war. I says, but fear, and the Bible says, perfect love casts out all fear. Franklin Delano Roosevelt said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself, look it in the eye. I said, so this is why they can instill peace. But if we could re-educate people, I says, and that is what we need to do, the awareness. Just like with bullying, Mike, which I know you pull for and I do too, you know, and, and all of these things that are going on. The awareness and re-educate people, as Apostle Paul said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind and your heart. Then there wouldn't be all of this violence, <clears throat> hatred, prejudice killings in the street and I know we can't conquer it all that will happen when Christ returns which is very eminent and, and the signs are upon us we don't, we don't know the day nor the hour as you know but he's close but at least we are all instruments of his peace and love and you Mike and your people and, and people that care uh, it doesn't have to be you know your neighbor is anyone who is in need as the scripture says so this is what we're doing and we're taking it wide you know well I'll tell you Pete um the world needs hope. The world needs uh, to know that there is a movement behind the scenes to to tackle this issue. I mean, John Lennon sang about it. Peace. Many songs have been written. Uh, you know, since what, what you know, I can remember the '60s, peace and love, and yeah. and no war and everything. And now you believe in your heart finally that you are blessed to be part of a a, a, a major movement within the the global network of governments and 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 the global um you know the the powers that be are you believe that they are actually coming together finally to try to solve this problem and and and, and create the solution to 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 the to the global epidemic that has plagued us for for many years i mean peace and war i mean it's been War and peace forever, yeah. as far as I know. But to be complete peace and harmony and to, to reach out and make sure that everybody around the world is taken care of. There shouldn't be a starving children in this world. That's there shouldn't it. be the evil that's, that's hurting and so killing and, and maiming women and children and, and, and destroying families. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. truly believe in your heart that there's actually the movement has started to work towards making this a peaceful world. Yep. And, and so we're living in a history. You're actually a pioneer in, in many, many ways. Um, because, you know, I don't know if we'll actually see that complete transformation in our lifetime. I would pray that I would love to see it. I, I, I kind of agree with you in a way, Mike, not to interrupt you. You had some very profound points, my brother, and I, I get emotional because... I know you have God in your heart, too, and that, you know, when you mentioned John Lennon, and John Lennon not only wrote songs, but he stood for peace, and, and so did Abraham Lincoln, and so did Martin Luther King, and did you ever notice, and this is another thing I brought out to those delegates, and it's in my film, my upcoming feature from The Mentor, that I wrote it right into the dialogue, for sake of a point, not to be on a, a podium, not to be, uh, you know, an activist, uh, we are all ministers of God's word. You say I'm a pioneer. So are you, sir. So are you, sir. Because we are we are instruments in God's hands. You know, and uh, and and I am very honored. I'm a very humble man that they approached me, little me. You know, I mean, yeah, oh, okay. I'm known as an entertainer and international recognition and everything. And I'm again, I say that humbly. But you know, uh, they came to me and they said, we we know what you do. We've seen some of your work and that you reach out to whether it's solo or, or, or the masses, and I says, well, this is what Christ would want me to do. This is what my Lord commanded me to do. That's where you and I are very much in common, my brother. You know, so when you mention, like, those that were the patriarchs, Gandhi, uh, Abraham Lincoln, John Lennon, uh, 
uh, Martin Luther King. These are all no, people that stood for peace. And in the dialogue of my film, I say to the, in a scene to the leading lady, I says, why is it that anyone that ever advocated peace and love? Society saw fit to cut them off. Every one of them caught a bullet. Every one of them. And, and, and you know what? I said, if that's the way God would want me to go, not, I'm trying to be no martyr, but that's not where we're going. We're going to strive for peace. And that, we're trying to educate people that, as you just said, there's no need for the guns on the streets. There's no need for the hatred, the prejudice, the violence, uh, and all of these things in the world, and the killings, and children being bullied, and children being killed, and animals being abused, and elderly people being abused. Every night on the news, this is all we hear. And, and you know, when you said about seeing it in our lifetime, we may just be very fortunate, because the way things are, and the way the conditions of the world are now, yeah, you and I would have to sit back and say, I don't see it happening. It's out of control like a, like a rampant forest fire. It's out of control. Yet, God can do all things. And God wants peace on this earth, and it's coming with the return of his son, Jesus Christ. So, from now till then, and we know not the day nor the hour, but it is close, and the signs he gave are eminent and around us. So, therefore, you and I, my brother, and those that are watching, those that are out there not watching are going to be in for a royal surprise. Okay, look up for the redemption draw at nine. But we may very well be able to see this happen in our lifetime. That because, would be good. You know, uh, I, I would venture to say, and you know, I'm not a, a soothsayer or an astrologist or any of that because we don't believe in that. But we look at the signs in the scriptures, and if this, but you have that, that, you have the, you have that vision. You know, uh, you know and that's what that's look. what people need. They need that vision. They need that hope. They need to, 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 to know that there are people, regardless if they're in high places, that they have a heart. Exactly. They're part of humanity. Yep, the vision and the faith in God, which many of our people in government don't have. They're trying to take God out of everything. Okay, and I'm not going to get into politics, but they have removed God from the uh, Pledge of Allegiance from our schools, from our court system. They don't even swear people in anymore. Uh, do you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. They want to take uh, the, the Lord's Prayer away. They want to take all of this away. They're trying to even take God off our currency, um, so, which is what they worship. That's their golden calf. But my point being is, is that another good point there that you had is that, you know, if we're the pioneer, we're ministers of his word. And where I was going was is that, in our lifetime, here and now, the world we see around us, watch CNN, watch the news, watch Fox 5, all we hear is, you know, the political mudslinging, the, the, the money being squandered uh, uh, loosely, uh, people that are in need, as you mentioned, the homeless, our vets, the, the children, elderly, uh, people out of work, all of these things are not being attended to. And that should not be in a country that is so blessed and founded on God and state. And that we are one nation under God, man. We are. We always will be. And that is what is precedent, that we educate people and get them back to the ABCs, man. And I'm not into political. Yeah, I, 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 I truly I truly agree with you, Pete. Spiritual. You know, America, America is a beacon of light. Absolutely. Uh, still, globally. And, you know, these countries that are suffering and war-torn... War and, and things going on right now with ISIS and everything else, people are scared to death. Yes, people don't just... know, and there's so many people around the world that are being, you know, mistreated and, 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 and removed and destroyed of their families and homes and children having to cross Absolutely. deserts and refugees. I mean, there's so much chaos and insanity. You truly believe, and I do too, we... We have to come together in the name of love of humanity and love of our fellow brothers and sisters Absolutely. and put an end to this and, and, and create some type of global peace and re-education because this technology right now, we are all connected electronically and digitally. I believe we all need to be connected spiritually That's it. And, and, and in a loving manner. That's it. It's and I think phones. that's the key. You know, I do a joke in my act that it's smartphones and smart TV and the technology is good. It has its pros and cons, but we got dumb people. They're becoming lazy. See? They don't know how to pick up a phone or, or you know, uh, a rather in person. I, I actually saw in New York City four, right five, four or five young ladies sitting at the same table laughing and giggling because they were texting each other instead of talking to each other. <laughs> This is the generation we're living in. They're texting each other right there. It's the selfie generation. 
Yeah, the you know. of selfies. Yep. It's all about selflessness and, yeah. and selfishness. And people are, you know what? The technology, there's got its pros and cons, but I see it like this. And I do have visions. And I, and, and, and I just wrote my column today, Walk the Turtle, and the title of it was Love? Question mark. I love your column, by the way. It's great. Absolutely, it's great. And, and, you know, it, it's the question of love. You know, there's so many aspects, and love is the most powerful force in the world. That's what Jesus stood for, was that's love. What's no that's matter what, to us. no great. matter what, love e each other. You love the He says, this greatest commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. People no don't love to any the show, power of love. love. Yep. And it's, you know, it's Valentine's Day right now, yesterday. There's yep. love in the air. And I, I would love to see my vision of having that one day of Valentine's Day and Christmas yep. and all those holidays where people come together yep. and smile that into an everyday occurrence. I'm smiling right now, my brother, and you just touched my heart because you and I think so much alike. In that I have always said in many of my writings of columns or in seminars and even on the air and interviews that Christmas, Thanksgiving, uh, you know, Valentine's Day, whatever. These are all days that we show love. Mother's Day, Father's Day, but Fourth of July, every day, Memorial every day, day. Every day, we give thanks unto the Lord. Every day, love should be in the air. And this is the greatest commandment that Jesus gave us. No greater love could any man show than to love his brethren. Lay down his life for his brethren. And if you look at the parable of the Good Samaritan, how many people passed that man by? But this one man not only tended to his wounds, put him on his donkey, got him an inn, gave him money, got him food and shelter, and got him medical attention after he was beaten and robbed. But everybody else walked right by. And isn't that the world we're living in today? That those step over a person. Oh, I'm not going to get involved. Hmm. Uh, you know, your, yes. your, your brother is, is, is the... Is, uh, the man or he or she that is in need, whether they lived right next door to you, your neighbor, or the person clear on the other side of the globe, we are all, whether our skin is a different color or our nationality, doesn't matter. And this How is can, was, Since you yeah. are in that, this position now in life, God has placed you in this position, um, what can people do and how can they contact you and be part of this and, and make a difference? How is this all tying in with the everyday Joe that wants to do something, that wants to be part of it, that wants to, to, to be part of that army that brings the world together globally in the name of love and peace? I mean, that's, a, that's a very good question, and there are many ways. Um, I have now since, and, and again, I'm so honored, and it is, and I told this to Adam Greenwell, who is the son of Liz, and he's the director uh of the organization and they're in New Zealand which is a whole day's difference in time and Mike during October uh, you know as it built up to October 4th I was getting Skypes virtually from people all over the world that I don't even know invites to their countries princes princesses dukes duchesses I mean I was up all night for four or five months I mean literally getting maybe two three hours sleep and I'm used to that but you know I'm human uh, and and I was so impressed and so honored that there are some of them that are still in touch with me from Pakistan this man is a Christian and he is what a university and he right and he lives in fear every day he sleeps with one eye open for you know because he's a Christian they would behead him they would kill his family everything there's another one in Dubai uh, you know I mean this is amazing that these people Already you could see that gathering together of people that want to say, my brother, I want to help. What can I do? And people can go, A, to uh, globalcooperationday.org. They can go to my website. It's on there also. My website is uh, just www.pete, short for Peter, P-E-T-E-D-E-L-O-R-E-N-Z-O.com. They can contact my office. All my contact information is on my website. They can hit me on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, and there is much on my you know social networks that I'm on. Uh, well, you know, always another, another question. Another question, Pete. Yep. But if people, I understand a lot of people want to do something, but they don't know what they have to offer. Mm -hmm. They don't know how they can be part of it. What, what, what is your suggestions to the everyday common person that wants to be part of it 
And what do you believe that the everyday common person has to offer that you can use as a resource in order for them to make a difference? Very, very good question again, Mike. Uh, they are, there are people out there that have many, many talents. And Jesus also told us, you don't take your talent and put it under a bushel, but you put it on a candlestick that it gives light unto the whole house. So you have people that may have you know, writing skills. You have people that may have phone skills. You have maybe people that have extra time and can volunteer that can just help keep promoting and networking and getting it out there. And they could do that on Facebook. They could do that on their Facebook wall. They could do that on their, uh, you know, uh, if they're on Twitter and just tweet it out. And, and there are many people that have called my office. I get calls in the middle of the night. People that say, what can I do? Just as you had mentioned. So there are many things they can do. They can write letters. They can, they can write letters to the U.N., uh, they can write letters uh, to their congressmen, senators. I mean, not getting into politics, but basically just everyone. If every one person, and it's not about just raising the dollars, because the dollars will go to providing directly, every penny goes directly to the needs of getting war. We have, we have uh, helicopters and everything and, and, and uh, um, uh, United Way and other organizations that have merged to. And my nephew is a bush pilot. He lives in Africa with his wife and two children. And uh, so he, he does missionary work with uh, Peace Corps and things like that. So there are means of getting the actual goods. We get it right there to them and make sure it gets beyond political boundaries and, and, and poachers and things of that nature. So, you know, a lot of organizations pose as wanting to help some, and I don't judge anyone, but there are a lot of them that are scams. There are some of them that give some of the money and then take it. This is all going directly. And then whatever funds are raised when we do the worldwide broadcast, that goes directly to getting, whether it's pencils and paper to the, those children and villages, whether it's getting medical drop, uh, medicine and drop, uh, food drop, clothing. I mean, there was one gentleman from Africa saying, can you please just send us a can of beans? This is wow. how it's, Yeah, a can of beans. Now think about how many people... How much food is wasted in this country? I, I tell you, Pete, I, I know, you know, I, I've had a, uh, a heck of a life. You know, I've had a lot in my life, and I've lost everything. I was homeless. I know what it's like, how valuable just a can of food is. Yeah. Not knowing how the heck I'm going to get money or be able to where my next meal is coming from. And I, 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 my heart goes out, man, to people out there that are starving and not... Have, they have no direction. They're, they are not educated. There they don't go. understand. You said it, Mike. They have no direction. And what we want to do is give them that compass to get out of the woods. Give them that road map so they're, if they're lost. Give them that GPS, you see. And that is the awareness. That is the, the knowledge, see, the wisdom that comes from God. And then we just impart it to others. You know, so when people hit me with accolades and I get a lot of this, oh, you're a great person, what you're doing, I say, thank you, but the glory goes to God because I'm just an instrument in his hands like a spoon that stirs your coffee. So the glory goes to him, but, and so are you, and we all are. But how many people say, like you said, well, what can I do? Or others that say, well, you know, oh, yeah, here, here we go again, another organization, and how do we know what's legit, and everybody's crying for money. Yeah, if yeah. everybody took that mindset, do the research, do the homework, get knowledgeable and say, yeah, uh, let me roll up my sleeves and jump in and help. And it could be the simplest thing. You know, many times, Mike, and, and again, I say this humbly, but when I've done humanitarian work, it doesn't have to be like I've done, whether it was a major organization like this, when I was spokesman for Healing the Children for two years, uh, when I was with Hands Across America, USA for Africa, uh, so many different organizations. Or I've gone one-on-one -on -one for a child that's ill and went and prayed at the hospital bed over that child and, and, and said prayers for the child and helped raise money for a single mom that was struggling with medical bills and things like that. I mean, a homeless guy, I'll go and I won't give him money because maybe he's going to go get a fix or maybe he's going to buy some booze, but I will go and I will buy him food. And I've done that many there, times. You know, you hit on a good point. It's, and it reminds me of the, the song that the Van Zants uh, have, have produced called Help Somebody. Right. Get right with the man. You know, go out there and help somebody. Right there is just making a difference. I see people every day, you know, shake somebody's hand that looks down and out, especially a bit, somebody wearing a uniform. You yeah. know, God, for, you know, those are the people out there that are fight for our freedom. They're laying their lives online so, to protect us as we sit here talking. Yeah. You know, I've seen a guy in a wheelchair 
I, when I walk my dog Molly, and you know he, I, I see him all the time, and and, and whenever I and, I and a and a guy on a bicycle, a whole black fella, mm -hmm. every you know wave at somebody, say mm -hmm. hello, give him a smile. That's exactly. the thing is people aren't smiling, and people keep that all those frustrations and worries and everything built up, yeah, and nobody awful. reaches out to anybody. Yeah, Nobody says, like, hey, man, uh, you're not alone. Yeah, you know, a lot of, a lot of loneliness. People you know, feel that people, they're all alone, and they're not. You just hit on another thing. You think about the amount of people, uh, especially young people, the suicidal rate, the oppression, yes. the oppression, people getting obese because of it, people not watching their diets, people abusing their bodies, uh, people going into major depression, clinical depression. Three-quarters of the hospitals are filled with people because of diseases that come from stress. And everybody watched, has, everybody has stress, and we all do, but uh, the world and the conditions, like you just mentioned, Mike, you just mentioned a lot of them, of uh, people that are just don't know where to turn anymore. They're forlorn. They're, they're, they're oppressed. And, 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 you know, this is what Jesus administered to, the sick, the needy, the well, poor. I, I, I watched this uh, piece they had on Sunday morning this morning, television show, which I watch religiously every every weekend. And they they hit on the point of, uh, you know, because of Valentine's Day, so they had different aspects of, of, of love right. and heartbreak. Now, loneliness is, is a source, is a type of heartbreak. To be heartbroken and have your heart, you know, in yourself down so deep and you feel like there's no hope, that I believe if we could turn that around yeah. and bestow some some extreme love into everybody to let them know that they are not alone. Yeah. A heartbreak, they say, can kill somebody. Absolutely. And, and it Science. physically showed it on on the uh, the, the x-rays where they did of a heart. One was was didn't have any depression or, or heartbreak and this, and then one that, that did. And there was a, a distinct difference in the way that the heart moved and, 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 and the way it, it's, 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 it's a, totally the heart is a spiritual organ. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, when you think about it, and I've often said this in many interviews too, and especially in seminars, we know forensically when Jesus was crucified, the most cr uh, gruesome form of, uh, you know, torture and, and killing and death. He was uh, in the you know, well, when he was speared in his side and forthwith came blood and yeah. water, but technically in the way he was, you know, hung on that cross, loss of blood from being scourged and, and then nailed to the cross. Uh, we know he, he, he no doubt died forensically of loss of blood and asphyxiation because the lungs would cave in. But what I've always said is, you know what Jesus really died from? A broken heart. Broken heart. As he carried his cross, he looked at his mother in the crowd as recorded in scriptures and said, woman, weep not for me. But weep for these, for they have eyes and they see not, ears and they hear not, and their hearts are wax cold. And that is the generation that we are living in, even more so from the beginning of time. Cain, who slew his own brother Abel, and it's gone on and on. I said to the gentleman in, in that conversation and in that uh, conference call from the UN, I said, you know, and before... They had bombs. What did they have? Sticks and stones, and then it was arrows, and then it was guns and cannons, and then bombs. I said, now we got nuclear warfare and germ warfare. What's next? I said, so technically, when you go back to what you said earlier, how long do we have? I mean, we don't, we don't know. We don't know the future. Only God does. But we know that he will give the word, and Jesus comes back. And if this earth, earth we're living on now, and the world that we're living in, has 10, 15, 20 years of max, because the way they're killing each other off in the streets, our air polluted, our water's polluted, killing off our wildlife, extinct, uh, children being killed, elderly being killed. I mean, uh, all that they have at their disposal with implements of war, if that was ever used, it would be over in a minute. They said more people died in Hiroshima from the, uh, you know, uh, after effects and the pollution and, 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 and the air and water that killed more people off than the actual impact of the bomb itself. Well, I'll tell you what, Pete, um, we've got we've got actually one minute left. We've got our unsigned show coming up with, uh -huh. uh, with John D. Brown, I Love to Rant, where he's spotlighting all those independent artists that are unsigned. And then we've got The Way of the Master running tonight at 8 o'clock. 
with Kirk Cameron and Ray Comfort and their documentary series where they're out there reaching out, uh, spreading the word of the Lord. And go. I feel very blessed. And what I want to do, Pete, is I'd like to continue our interviews once a month, call it the Direction of the Heart. I would be honored. Bill Lorenzo and Mike Aloya. And, uh, buddy, we're going to spread the word, and hopefully we're going to let people know that they are not alone. There are things they can do and be part of. And we are a movement towards global peace with you, Mr. DiLorenzo. And I am blessed and honored that you are my brother in Christ. And, and I look so forward to working with you and us having these interviews every month. And uh, well, right, thank you so right. much, bro. And your wonderful staff and crew and your, your show uh, and the guests and your listeners uh, and viewers. Uh, Mike, it is always an honor, and I am blessed to have our lives have touched by the grace of God. And in the words of my mentor, who we just lost a few weeks ago, Mr. Joe Franklin, who discovered me and launched my career, uh, he always said, you know, it's good to be important, but it's more important to be good. Amen, brother. We'll see you next month, Pete. God bless you, man. Peace and love. God bless you too, my brother, right from the heart. Yes, sir. Rock and roll. Okay, brother. God bless. Bye-bye.